In this video lecture, I would like to give you a brief overview on the psychology of motivation. The subject of psychology deals with the question, what drives people's behaviors? So it seeks to explain our actions in terms of why is an action initiated? Why do people show a different level of intensity when conducting an action? And why do people show a different level of persistence when conducting an action? Most of our action we take is motivated by something. For example, by offering or requesting resources in a negotiation, we aim to achieve certain outcomes. But what motivates our behavior and how do people differ in their motivation? Motivation develops when an environmental situation addresses our motives or needs or in terms of negotiation research, when there is an opportunity to satisfy our interests. This can be both the motivation to achieve positive end states or the motivation to avoid negative ones. So what are these interests, needs and motives that drive motivated behavior? First of all, let's talk about interests. In the introduction, I referred to interests as desires and concerns that motivate people to claim a certain position. When I talk about interests as a negotiation researcher, interests are closely related to what is called goals in the literature of the research on motivation. In this line of research, a goal is defined as a desired end state which is considered to be attainable. As such, a goal requires some effort in order to be reached. However, there is a hierarchy of subordinate and subordinate goals. For example, the goal of building a house for a community living can be broken down into more concrete subordinate goals. These subordinate goals could be the construction of the foundation or the painting of the walls. At the same time, goals like building a house have subordinate and less concrete aims that we call needs and motives. Compared to goals, needs and motives do not define a concrete end state, but instead should be seen as a more abstract motivational force. So let's turn next to human needs and motives. A classification of basic human needs that is often used in psychology is the one of Abraham Maslow, who distinguishes between first, physiological needs such as food or air, the need for safety such as having a home or a stable income, the social need, for example, the need for belongingness, love and affiliation, the need for self-esteem, for example, self-respect and the respect from others, and the need for self-actualization, for example, to develop one's creativity. How are these needs related to commons and the sharing of resources? For instance, one basic human need that might be addressed by building a community house might be the need for safety, like having a safe place to sleep. Alternatively, the interest to build a community house could also address one's social need, for instance, the need to belong to a group of like-minded people. As you may have noticed, there is already an interesting discussion going on in the forum on Maslow theory and its relevance with respect to the social conflict on commons. You may want to participate and add your own thoughts to the discussion on this theory and think about the role of needs in the context of your own commons project you described in the earlier assignments. Now let's look at the psychological concept of motives. While needs such as the need for security are said to be universal for all humans, motives can vary in their personal relevance for different individuals. In other words, motives can be described as stable preferences over time to act towards certain goals. As such, they orient, select and energize our behavior. In today's psychology, three prominent motives have been classified. The achievement motive which describes the extent to which one seeks to master challenging tasks, the power motive, which describes the extent to which one seeks to be influential and to have an impact on others, and the affiliation motive, which describes the extent to which one seeks to create and maintain positive relationships. Of course, this classification of motives in terms of achievement, 
power and affiliation is just one way to distinguish between different types of human motives. In another approach, Stephen Rice proposes 16 human motives, which he calls desires. Among these 16 desires, there are several motives that may affect our behaviors and perceptions in negotiation on commons. For instance, the desire for power may drive people to control others. The desire for idealism may motivate people to achieve social justice and the desire for saving may provoke people's tendency to accumulate resources. There are many different classifications of human motives in the psychological literature. You will find some of these classifications in the course library, but you may also want to search other classifications in the web. Or even better, think about your own classifications. With respect to your Commons project and the process of negotiations, you should keep in mind that our needs and motives are the underlying forces of our interests and preferences. The different resources in your Commons project address these needs and motives. By analyzing not only each party's preferences and interests, but also their underlying needs and motives, you may find integrative solutions that have not been explored thus far. In terms of the classification provided by Stephen Rice, my curiosity motive is now very high to gain further information of your opinion on the role of motives in your own Commons project.